We're back on WGN TV Political Report. Now, we know Springfield knows how to spend money, but if you want to learn how we invest to make money, hey, then you need to speak with my next guest, Illinois State Treasurer Michael Frerichs joins me. Mr. Treasurer, good to see you. Paul, great to be back. Um, obviously, the state is in serious financial need. The governor did not get the graduated income tax that he wanted. From your perspective as the investment guy, can we fix our situation simply by closing corporate loopholes, the kind of thing that he's proposing? Well, I'd say in our office, we can't solve all the state's problems internally here, but we're doing our part to help out by trying to increase investment income because every dollar we can make in interest earnings is a dollar the governor doesn't have to raise in taxes or with closing of loopholes. Let me go to something that people did get fearful about, the notion of taxing retirement income. I don't think it's in the plan. You at one time had talked about it. Uh, where do you stand on that now? And are retired people, should they have any concerns yet? Uh, let me be very clear. I don't support taxing retirement income. I didn't support tax retirement income. We talked about possibilities. Uh, but no, I don't think it's in anyone's plan, so retirees should not be worried about that. But to uh, make it very clear, I do not support taxing retirement income. Okay, we've, it's now on tape, so we've got you on that. Back on March 15th, um, your, your office had noted that Illinois passed the $1 billion in state investment earnings since you took office. That's, that's great news. Um, it's kind of the flip side of the budget problem, right? I mean, we can't, we're not bringing in enough money, but you're making money uh, in terms of the investments. Just sort of curious, curious how much do the, does the money incurred through the investments that you bring in, the billion dollars, how does that play out in a budget? Does it play out in a budget at all? Where do we see it? Yeah, every, every dollar we can earn in interest is a dollar the governor and the General Assembly don't have to raise in taxes. Now, the deficit is far greater than the amount we've earned, but just because someone can't solve all the problems themselves doesn't mean that they shouldn't try to be part of the solution. We reached out to the General Assembly. They, although I'm the chief investment officer for the state, they sent guidelines about where I can invest, but a couple of times we've gone and said, if you would just allow us to have a few other investment options, we could keep risk low, but have a higher interest rate. We could earn more money for the state. And twice working in a bipartisan manner, uh, the General Assembly granted us that authority. Um, the other day, you proposed that businesses with five or more employees should be required to offer retirement savings plans for those employees. I get it. Your heart's in the right place on that. I'm just sort of curious that it, in a time of pandemic, when businesses are trying to just survive, we're seeing many of them close, is this the time to pursue that? Well, the businesses don't have any expenses associated with this. They cannot contribute. What they're doing is they're facilitating their employees saving their own money for their retirement. When these businesses send payroll tax to the state of Illinois, they send a percentage of their employees' salary as well, which goes into their employees' own individual Roth IRA. We have a retirement crisis here in this country. And if we don't help to solve it, there's going to be a large number of people who will be unable to retire, or if they do retire, they'll be living near poverty. And they're eventually then going to turn to the state for help with our social safety net costing all of us. So we all have a responsibility to help solve this crisis. Let me just ask a political question uh, for a moment. Um, you, uh, we're in a census here, obviously, we might lose a couple of congressional representatives. And uh, you had written uh, an op-ed, I think, in which you talked about the fact that people should not, uh, uh, should not be donating to Republicans who have objected to the election. And that Democrats, even though we've, they've lost some space uh, downstate, they can get people back because of their policies. Sort of curiosity in a day when Donald Trump does very well in places like downstate. Uh, are the social issues more governing? Do you really think that the Democrats who once appealed to the working class no longer seem to appeal to them as Republicans seem to be appealing to working class? Yeah, well, let me just put, make one thing very clear. We didn't say that corporations couldn't donate to Republicans. We asked for enhanced disclosure. And when donating to causes or organizations that advocate an overthrow of our government, advocate sedition, we want to know that because that presents a risk to us as investors. If we are destabilizing our government, it's going to destabilize our markets and cost us as an investor. But yes, I also did write an op-ed saying that Democrats shouldn't give up on any part of the state. There have been changes going on in demographics and uh, political realignment over the last few years. But there are people out there throughout the state of Illinois, including Southern Illinois, downstate Illinois, that once voted Democratic. And I think that if we talk about a message focused on helping them to get jobs, providing access and opportunity through things like access, increased access to broadband. I think we can win a lot of those people back.
We have run out of time. We didn't have a chance to talk about things like Bright Start and unclaimed property. And let me send people to your website uh, to check all of those things out because there's so many programs going on in the treasurer's office. We will catch up on that at another time. But I thank you for your time, Illinois State Treasurer Michael Frerichs. Thank you, sir. I'll look forward to talking to you again. You got it. One last break. And when we come back, another push to end qualified immunity for police across Illinois is gaining traction in Springfield. That and more on the race to end to the end of the Springfield session when we come back.